Hi everyone, uh, I'm Francine Toon, the author of Pine. Um, let's see if we can show it in the light there. Um, and I am absolutely delighted to be uh, shortlisted for the McIlvany Prize. And I've kindly been asked to read a little extract from the book. I'm going to read the beginning of the book um, for a couple of minutes and then I will talk a wee bit more about what inspired me to uh, write this book. Chapter 1 They are driving out for guising when they see her. It is the narrow part of the road that cuts through the hem of the forest. Some firs arch so densely here they block the night sky. Lauren sits high in the passenger seat, her elasticated gym shoes swinging over cans of kick and a chewed up tennis ball. She has braided her hair and wears it in a circle like a garland. Neil, her father, is steering their dented pickup and listening to Aerosmith. It smells of dog fur even though Jameson isn't in the truck. Is that lipstick? her father asks. No, it's face paint, Lauren says, lying. It's the one time of year she can wear something of her mother's. It feels precious, clandestine. She holds a pumpkin-shaped bucket on her knees. Her face is powdered white except for the deep red trickle in the corner of her mouth. There is no reason it can't be face paint. Her dress is black with a cream lace collar. They bought it for her grandmother's funeral 11 months ago, when she was nine and a half. Her arms stick out of their sleeves, reminding her that next year the dress might be too small. Her father says maybe next year they'll stop. But for now, she is a vampire. She likes this outfit because they live in a tiny village and no one can tease her, unlike at school. In her pocket, there's a piece of antler that folds out into a knife. The headlights cast two white beams into the black. Up ahead, there is a kink in the single track lane, a passing place, its diamond sign growing luminous as they approach. Lauren sees a skinny figure standing in the scrub of the verge, enveloped in a large white dressing gown. Jesus, her father says as they bump past. Who's that? Lauren cranes back at the dark road. The trees are thinning out. Who's what? replies her father and turns up the music. Um, so that's the beginning, just before Lauren, who's dressed up as a vampire, is going guising um, with her father. And it's set at Halloween, which is uh, one of my favourite times of year. And I grew to love Halloween um, from when I moved to the Highlands, to Sutherland, uh, when I was a little bit younger than Lauren. Um, I was about eight or nine. And one of my kind of earliest memories is guising which is the Scottish form of kind of trick-or-treating and it is based on a kind of a pagan tradition. I think guising started about in the 16th century but sort of Halloween as a celebration uh, goes back for centuries to, to the pagans and Samhain. Um, it's a time of year that comes after the harvest, that's, that's why it's kind of the marker there um, to signal the beginning of winter and the kind of the darker half of the year, which then switches when you get Beltane, which is actually a big, still a big pagan festival in, in Edinburgh. So um, Halloween is kind of all about guising. It's about this idea that the spirit world, the kind of boundary of the spirit world is, is much thinner and um, spirits and ghosts can kind of pass through at this time of year, um, which is, is something that I was very mindful of without giving too much away in writing Pine. And it was my favourite time of year, um, maybe more than Christmas, maybe the same amount of Christmas. It was a chance to kind of dress up. You could dress up as anything you wanted, really. It didn't necessarily have to be kind of um, spooky, but uh, a lot of people did. 
and you would go around with your group of friends in this small village that I lived in, which is very similar to the small village in Pine where Lauren uh, lived with her dad. In the small village I lived in, I went with my friends and we visited our neighbours, our parents would come along as well, and it was like a chance for neighbours to kind of catch up. In the traditions of um, guising, uh, it kind of came from the idea that there are these spirits that have come kind of through at this time of year and you should kind of leave out uh, sort of things to, to appease them and to kind of mollify them, which would be in the form of apples and nuts. And um, we still had and still have at Halloween um, duking for apples. And we would also be given a lot of monkey nuts by some people, which we didn't really appreciate at the time as children. We much preferred whoever was going to give us some Haribo or a Mars bar. Um, and actually reading that apples and nuts are traditional at this time of year suddenly made a lot more sense as to why people were giving us monkey nuts. Um, we'd play other games like having donuts on a string, like a string of donuts um, that you would have to try and eat without um, using your hands or licking your face. And it was, yeah, it was a great time. Um, when I was up there, I'd be kind of reminded of pagan kind of traditions, such as there was a group of standing stones in, in the field next to my house. Um, there was also a lot of storytelling about kind of Kelpies and Selkies. The closest town to me um, was Dornick, which is famous, among other things, for being the last place in the UK to um, execute somebody for witchcraft in 1727. It was a woman called uh, Janet Horne. And so in Pine, I sort of paid homage to her and created a much darker, much less friendly version of the town that I called Strathhorn after her. By writing Pine, I kind of used these traditions. I looked into witchcraft, which, you know, there were a lot of witch trials in Scotland. I looked at old kind of rituals that witches were said to carry out in Scotland. And then I also looked at kind of neo-paganism, which is also something that you can find that's present in, in, in the Highlands the same way as anywhere else. Um, spiritual practices like Reiki, um, EFT, kind of a new age healing, tarot, which was really fascinating to look into. Um, I learned a lot about all the symbolism in the cards, which kind of comes into play in the book and it was like a really great way to sort of open up that feeling of the otherworldly, the kind of spiritual, the mystical um, in the book. So I was trying to sort of bring all these things together. Another aspect was the ghost stories of that is traditional in the Highlands, but then at the same time I was also being told a lot of um, modern sort of ghost stories in the form of urban legends that feature characters such as a vanishing hitchhiker or a babysitter, certain tropes like mysterious dripping. Um, those stories used to terrify me when I was younger, but I kind of got into the, I got used to them and I started to tell them to other people, um, which gave me some kind of control over them and also taught me about storytelling itself and how to kind of create suspense and mystery, which is something that I um, really hoped uh, came across in writing Pine, that there is this dark mystery at the centre of the book about Lauren's mother who went missing um, 10 years previously when Lauren was a baby. So I hope you have a very good Halloween uh, this year. And if you come across a copy of Pine, um, I really hope that you enjoy it. Thanks.